Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video, we will be covering the concept of rate of force development and how this may influence athletic training. To understand what rate of force development is, we need to have a look at how force is produced over time. As we can see on this graph, athletes cannot produce maximal force immediately. Maximal forces aren't usually reached until around 2 to 3 seconds into an exercise. The term rate of force development refers to how quickly force can be produced. So a faster rate of force development means that maximal force can be reached in a shorter time frame. So what does rate of force development mean for athletic performance? As we already established, it generally takes multiple seconds to produce maximal force. However, most athletic movements only allow force to be applied in a fraction of a second. For example, during a sprint, ground contact times are usually around 0.2 to 0.1 seconds. Therefore, athletes can't actually apply maximal forces during these exercises. However, if an athlete can increase the amount of force they can produce in a short time frame, then they will likely increase their athletic performance. So how can we improve rate of force development? There are two primary ways that we can do this. The first training method is maximal strength training. Maximal strength training will increase the absolute amount of force that can be produced. This won't actually increase how fast force can be produced, but it will raise the ceiling of how much absolute force can be produced. As we can see in this graph, an athlete who has become stronger can produce higher peak force in the same time frame. Therefore, even during short time frames, the amount of force will be higher. So even though the rate hasn't improved, higher absolute strength levels will still increase the force produced at sub-maximal levels. And the second training method to increase rate of force development is fast velocity power training. Fast velocity power training refers to ballistic exercises with no load or very light loads that require force to be produced in short time frames. This form of training won't increase maximal force output, but it can allow the same amount of force to be produced in a shorter time. As we can see here, an athlete who has used fast velocity power training can produce the same amount of force, but it reaches maximal levels faster than previously. So during athletic movements, more force can be produced in shorter time frames. So what does all this mean for athletic training? Well essentially, athletes should probably perform both strength training and fast velocity power training. This way, athletes can increase the total amount of force they can produce and then train to produce this quickly. Some athletes are naturally skewed to one direction or the other, meaning that some athletes are able to produce high forces, but not very quickly, while other athletes may be able to produce force very quickly, but they are limited by their absolute force output. Theoretically, athletes may then benefit from training the qualities they are weaker at, so very strong athletes may benefit from more power training, while more powerful athletes may benefit from more strength training. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.